Hello, I'm Cheryl Kahn, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite techniques. It's called styrofoam plate printing, and all you really need is some paper towels, styrofoam, scissors to cut the styrofoam, ballpoint pen to mark a design. I also have a spray bottle and a big container of water. Underneath my work, I use a product called deli paper or sandwich paper, especially if I'm using fabric, because the fabric will bleed through to this paper, and what will happen is you can tear it and use it for collage. If you're using paper, it won't bleed through. So I'm going to cut kind of an odd shape, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a simple design. I really love X's. I don't know why but I think they're very cool. And I like to come in sometimes and just draw triangles. They just add an interesting element. And I'm going to kind of repeat this little circle that I have here. And then I'm going to draw just some parallel lines. So you can see I'm keeping this very simple. So now let us begin. I am using Cheryl Sorbet's Mango, and I'm going to sponge some color on. And I work out of the lid, and I'm going to just sponge, and I'm going to put that aside, and I'm going to put a little bit of violet. This is the violet neopaque that I'm using. I'm going to switch my sponge over. Halo Blue Gold Lumiere. This is a spectacular color. It's like everybody's favorite color. And I'll find another clean edge and put some of that on. And now I'm ready to print. Now, I'm going to just show you printing on dry fabric, and all I do is take this and press it down, and I'm going to get hopefully a good print. You never know what's going to happen, but it doesn't matter because you're going to see another thing that I'm going to do to it. Then you pull it up, and I actually got a pretty interesting print. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spray bottle, and I'm just gently going to spray and see what happens to get another print. So usually, you can get two prints. Okay, I got a bit of a print, not a great print. The other possibility is I can take it and spray it just a little bit myself and see if I can get a print. So let's see what happens with that. And I don't care if it even prints in the same spot, but let's just see. I got a little bit, but not much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply more paint. And at this point, I'm going to just put my sponge in water, and I'm going to let it dry. I have a stack of paper towels over here. So I still have this sort of wet piece, and I'm going to press the plate onto there, and I actually have a very interesting print. Turn it over, and I'm going to spray it liberally. I don't want it like sopping wet, but... Now, I'm going to take Dynaflow. It's a very liquid paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by taking my lightest color. I have it in a squeeze bottle. These come in little exciter packs, and I'm going to just liberally squeeze this paint, and I'm especially going to go where I see lines. Interesting thing happens with this particular paint. The Dynaflow is unlike other paints in that it kind of pushes the other color away and you get another color. It's extremely interesting. And what happens, especially with the violet and the yellow, can you see I'm getting like a wet into wet effect here? And I'm just going to liberally put this on here. But on the edges, I don't know if you can see this, but it turns like a red-orange color. It's really cool. And I'm going to add bright orange. And for fine artists, you could use this like a watercolor. I'm going to take my wet sponge, and I'm going to just kind of spread the paint. Now let's turn it over. You can see what happened with this first print. You've got a very nice resist going on. And the second print, not quite as defined, but very interesting. So what can you do with this? You can use this for collage. You can print over it again. We might let this dry a little bit and later on do another print. I might do another print with this. So now I'm going to do a bigger print. I'm going to cut this off about this big, and I'm going to do a very quick big print. And I'm going to print it right in the middle. And again, I'm going to just do a very simple design. Now you can see, again, this is making these little one way, this is interesting, one of the ways it's making no little ziggity zaggities. there's like all these little pokey things coming off here, 
And on the other side, it's not doing that. I don't want you to think about it too much unless you want to pre-plan it, which you can do. Now I'm ready to make the print. So I'm going to take my piece that I just did, and it's almost dry, and I'm just going to go like this a little bit to flatten it. And I'm going to use, obviously, darker colors and lighter colors in this. This is a middle value, so you want to have some contrast. So let me get a dry sponge, and I'm going to start sponging color on here, and I'm going to even shake up more. So I work a lot out of the jars. I just shake it up and I put color. So I'm getting this wonderful pearl on here. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to take some Cheryl Sorbet's Mint. It's really fun to have your own paint. I got to design it and kind of play with it and tweak it, and I even got to name it. I never can remember the names, but I did get to name it. And then I'm going to get another sorbet, a lighter one. This one's called Mango. I want to really get a clean color on here, so I'm taking another sponge, and I'm going to print this mango with my sponge. And so I'm just completely sponging out of the lid. I have a very juicy surface going here. I'm going to turn my piece around, sponge it some more. And now I'm going to flip over to a metallic. Sunset Gold Lumiere, and I'm just going to get some of that paint going in the center. I'm going to shake up even more into it. You want to work a little bit quickly, but it, you know something, if you have to print again, it's not a big deal because you can easily line up where you just did the other print, so you can add more to it. So I think I have quite a lot here. Now you're going to turn it face down, and I want to center it somewhat, but again, you know, it doesn't really matter. So put it face down, walk your fingers over the back. Okay. Now again, I'll just hold my piece of paper down, and I will lift and see what my print looks like. And if I do say so, this is pretty interesting. I love to add applicator tip lines. This is Lumiere Metallic Gold, and I used a different gold in here, so this will contrast a bit. Now what you're going to do is squeeze gently, and you can see, you can vary. Like if I squeeze really hard, I get a big bubble. If I squeeze hardly, I get a little dot. This takes some practice, but this is what I usually do. When I make a line, I go like this and you get a much more interesting line. You want your work to have a lot of expression and excitement. So I'm going to actually follow the lines in my design, and I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to just gently add a little bit of the highlight of the line, and bring it up off of the paper. And I think I'm going to bring one more right here. It just adds a little bit of that finishing that you want to have in your work. Now what can you do with this piece? If you wanted it to be a piece of fine art, at this point you could add more painting, you could add more layers, textures, whatever you want to do. Or if you want it just to be a nice expressive piece that we have here, you leave it alone. It's really up to you as the artist. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you're going to do this technique. You will enjoy it so much. You can try any paints that you have as long as they're water soluble and then see what you can do with the styrofoam afterwards. Thank you so much for watching. I loved doing this and sharing with you.